Could just go Catilda plus another Aspirant. And keep pumping the Veteran. And then next turn, Adline can come out and start making tokens. So it's gonna be tough for the point to get rid of Katilda, as a fight with the pack leader is not gonna work. And then we can eventually sink all our mana into Katilda's ability to put counters on the team. They could have a fight effect to kill Veteran, but without three Snowlands, Blizzard Brawl would not give the one extra power. Block here. Opponent reading Katilda now, realizing the protection from werewolves. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Celestia Humans, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a ton of new cards from Innistrad Midnight Hunt, and one of the centerpieces of the deck is undoubtedly Sigarda, Champion of Light. The 4-mana 4-4 four four Mythic Rare Legendary Angel is the only non-human in the deck. She has Flying, Trample, and gives humans we control plus one plus one, and there's more. She also has a powerful Coven ability, saying whenever Sigarda attacks, if we control three or more creatures with different powers, we can look at the top five cards of our library, reveal a human creature card from among them, and put it into our hand. So not only do we get decent stats, but we also get to pump up our team and get a nice card draw ability on top. Then another key card in the deck is Catilda Dawnheart Prime. The 2-mana 1-1 one, one, legendary human warlock has protection from werewolves, which is a relevant line of text and standard nowadays, and human creatures we control can tap to add 1 mana of any of this creature's colors. So now all of a sudden all our humans can tap for mana, and with that mana we can potentially use Catilda's last ability. For 6 mana we can tap her to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control. So Catilda really allows for these very explosive starts where we can turn all our creature tokens into mana generators to quickly empty our hands and overtake the board. And a great use for Catilda is sinking a bunch of mana into our intrepid adversary. The very powerful 2-mana 3-1 human scout has a lifelink, and when the adversary enters the battlefield, we can pay 1 and a white any number of times, and when we pay this cost one or more times, put that many valor counters on the adversary, and creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each valor counter on the adversary. So if we can play Catilda, make a bunch of tokens, and then sink all that mana into an intrepid adversary, we can make our team enormous, which will make it very difficult for the opponent to recover. And then another key card in the deck is Augur of Autumn, the 3 mana 2 3 human druid that lets us look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play a lands from the top of our library as well. So, another great source of card advantage that can help us keep hitting those land drops. And as soon as we enable Coven and control three or more creatures with different powers, we may cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. And with only four non creature spells in the deck, the Augur of Autumn is sure to provide a lot of card advantage. So, between Augur of Autumn and Sigarda, we've got our card advantage covered, and both creatures are also great at finding each other, so we can get both card draw engines online. And then we also have two copies of Adeline, Resplendent Cathar. The Four Toughness Legendary Human Knight has Vigilance and Power equal to the number of creatures we control, so also plays well with our Go White theme, and Vigilance is nice alongside Catilda. And then whenever we attack with any of our creatures, we get to make a 1-1 white human creature token that's tapped and attacking the opponent or a planeswalker they control. Then we also have two copies of Brutal Cathar as a nice creature removal spell, as a 2-2 that when it enters a battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar can exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield, that's a daybound side, and then transforms into Moonrage Brute on the nightbound side, a 3-3 werewolf with first strike and ward requiring the opponent to pay 3 life, although for the most part we're happy to keep it daytime. And then looking at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana, we've got the full playset of Lunark Veteran, the 1-1 one, one Human Cleric, saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we gain 1 life. So just a nice way to pad our life total, and it's mostly here to kind of fill out our curve, give us a cheap play, and also play as well with Catilda, just giving us more cheap creatures to then turn into mana creatures to help us empty our hand. 
and then we can also disturb it out of the graveyard, although that's not going to come up a whole lot. And then we also have two copies of Gavany Trapper as another one mana human that can pay two mana, tap, to then tap target creature. So it gives us a bit more built-in removal in creature form. It's not a great card since it is kind of expensive to activate, but it's mostly here as a way to enable Coven as the only zero-powered creature in the deck. So it will be great alongside our Augur of Autumn and Sigarda, and can always turn into a mana creature with Catilda. And then a 2 mana, the only non-creature spell in the deck is Join the Dance, a 2 mana sorcery creating two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens, and we can also flash it back out of the graveyard for 5 mana, so this will gain a bunch of life with our Lunark Veteran, and hopefully we have a Catilda in play so they can start generating mana, makes it easier to flash it back as well, and then we can sink all that mana into a giant Entrapid Adversary to pump the team, with now a whole bunch of human tokens to kill the opponent. Then we also have the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant, still just a very powerful 2-mana human, a 1-1 one, one saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, also very useful for enabling Coven. And then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Elite Spellbinder, the 3-1 Human Cleric with Flying, that can look at the opponent's hand when it enters the battlefield, we can exile a non-land card from it, and the opponent has to pay two additional mana to cast it from exile, so very useful against sweeper effects and other impactful 5 and 6 drops. And then the mana base consists of all 8 green-white dual lands with overgrown farmlands and the green-white pathway, and then 7 basic forests and 9 basic plains. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Got a couple options, turn 2. Probably between Aspirants and Catilda. If we want to set up turn 3, Adlin, attack, make a token then Aspirant might be the better choice. Although Catilda can set up a Sigarda on turn 3, assuming there's no Blizzard Brawl. Sentinel, not a werewolf, so can take out Catilda. So, pretty close decision here. I think I'm going Aspirant first. And if this uh, eats a removal spell, I'm not going to be too sad. Because with double adversary, it's pretty important that Catilda survives to generate more mana. So there's a Blizzard Brawl incoming. Could have also baited with an adversary just to gain three life in the process. Alright, so I could play Adeline even if I don't get to attack. Still seems reasonable. And then next turn, we can uh, see if we want to play Sigarda first or Catilda and double spell. The Ranger class level up. So now it's actually tempting to just play Adversary with uh, two extra mana. That way the token we get from Adeline also can trade for the wolf. So we get to keep our token around, which will then generate more mana with Catilda. Opponent trades, that's fine by me. Gonna take six. And yeah, next turn's probably a good spot for Catilda, plus something else. Frog Hemoth can attack and pick up a plus one counter from Ranger class, so could technically get past Adeline. Ooh, and a Blizzard Brawl too. Alright, that was a good turn for them. But I think we'll be able to overpower this Frog Hemoth. So let's see here. If I play Catilda, could still play Sigarda and attack with Adversary. Seems decent. And then I'll gain a bunch of life in the process. And next turn... I could play another adversary before attacking. 
don't actually have Coven enabled since we control two three-powered creatures and two five-powered ones. Inscription of Abundance. Yeah, that's more removal that we don't want to see. Take 10. So, can play Adversary and sink 6 extra mana into it, so the original Adversary can attack and gain 7 up to 13. Yeah, I think that works. And so it doesn't trade for a Sentinel and a Wolf. Put on chumps. So probably can beat another removal spell here, but uh, not that on board. And I can take another hit from Frog Hemoth. We're at one. And a chariot, not bad. Brutal Cathar. All right, so what's next? Can also pump the team with Catilda. Let's say I were to attack with my two adversaries. Opponent would have to crew chariots and also block with a 2 2 token to trade. They can trade for my biggest adversary. So I could just attack with a smaller one. And then still play Cathar to exile Frog Hemoth. And that should leave us in a pretty good position. Does anything else want to attack is a question. I think I just attack with the 7-5 with one Valor counter. That way I can still pump with Catilda as well as play Brutal Cathar. There was an argument for playing it first, because then it would also pick up the counter. But now... Our opponent doesn't necessarily know what to play around. Alright, so they triple block, keeping the chariot around. That's fine. So... I could gain one more life, or I could... get a counter on the Cathar. I will guess we'll uh, put the counter on the Cathar. And I can use Scottilda at instant speed. A ranger class number two. And then our opponent explodes, yeah. Can put counters on everyone, and next turn force him to chump at the very least. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is not incredibly exciting, but it is good at enabling Coven, and we have our two Coven creatures, so I'll try it. And then hopefully pick up a two mana play along the way. Opponents with turn one planes. A mountain. Alright, there's my two drop. Could get killed before we get a counter from it. Well, at least now the Augur of Autumn is more likely to survive. And Gavany Trapper, also a reasonable answer to Goldspan Dragon, as we can tap it without giving the opponent a treasure. Caltilda coming up, that's a good one. So I could play Catilda into Sigarda next turn. As we see a Moonveil Regent from our opponent. Get a free land. And yeah, Catilda into Sigarda. Works out nicely. Could also play an extra Augur instead. As we've enabled Coven. 
but it's not trivial for the opponent to kill Sigarda here, and maybe next turn we get to use Sigarda's Coven ability to find more creatures. It's gonna be a Magda. Our opponent unlikely to discard to the Moonvale Regent anytime soon. Alright, I'll get my free veteran. Another Sigarda I could also play, but of course it's legendary. So let's attack first, offer the trade. I don't have to use a trapper since we have another Sigarda coming up. Although I guess never mind if I attack with Sigarda. We will trigger the ability, and Sigarda's not a human, so I wouldn't be able to uh, select an extra Sigarda. But I think I'm still okay with the trade. Alternatively, we can just use the trapper. Yeah, I guess we'll use a trapper. And then attack with Sigarda. Could also send Augur of Autumn. Although I might want to use it for mana. And find Spellbinder, Adeline. Both are great, but let's go with the Spellbinder. So we can have a look. And then I still have the mana to play Veteran and Spellbinder afterwards. As tempting as Aspirant is, I think I still want to play the Spellbinder here. And yeah, we see lots of dragons. Goldspan being the scariest one right now. Magic Missile also quite powerful. Can kill Katilda. Doesn't deal with Sigarda at least. I'll just make Goldspan more expensive. I'm okay if they kill one of my humans. And you can sort of see how all the card advantage plus the extra mana from Katilda works quite nicely together. Our opponent doesn't quite know what to do and decides to throw in the towel here. Understandably, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty solid. Can curve Aspirant into Augur into Sigarda. Should be able to enable Coven and generate a lot of extra cards. Even have a turn one veteran to kick things off. And then we'll try to hang on to the adversary until we can play it and sink a bunch of mana into it. Ooh, opponent on black red vampires and they turn to Katilda's. Quite exciting too. I think I might still wait on Katilda until we can tap the creatures we have in play right away. To generate some sort of advantage. Won't have enough green mana to play Katilda into Augur next turn. So we'll see. Royal Eruption killing Veteran. That works for me. And I'll take two. So now I could play Katilda, play Adversary just as a 3-1 or Disturb the Veteran. I guess since we have two Adversaries I'm okay playing one of them out. Although it appears like our opponent has some more interaction available. And then where to put the counter? Guess I'll just put it on Adversary and kind of use it as a, a lightning rod for removal. Alright, that works too. In this case I'll put it on Aspirant since Katilda's more valuable and also more likely to tap for mana. Alright, three removal spells later and Katilda somehow survived. Opponent's down to one card in hand, so all according to plan. Now, could play Sigarda, or I could go Veteran into Augur of Autumn, try and hit a land off the top. I think I'm okay going with uh, Sigarda here. And then should be able to enable Coven next turn with Augur of Autumn. Opponent still holding on to what could be a removal spell. Haven't seen too many vampires. Yep, 
If they kill Katilda, I'll need to draw a land in order to play Veteran and Augur to turn on Coven. Or I guess I could go Veteran plus Adversary, which also works. Right, play with Fire kills Katilda at long last, and I did draw the land. So I think I'm okay giving up on potential land of the top with Augur to be guaranteed an extra life. Alright, I would have been able to hit a land, but that's okay. And then Adeline or Adversary. Let's go with Adeline. So now we are gonna pull ahead with Augur and Sigarda. Westgate Regents, definitely powerful. Although I can block it with Sigarda. Play my free land. Could also play Intrepid Adversary to attack past the Regent if we think we can outrace it, which is not impossible, although it is a bit of a scary proposition. Also possible that they would trade for Sigarda if I play Adeline here. I guess I can always chump the Regent with Veteran on the way back if I play Adeline. So let's try that, actually. I'm okay if Sigarda trades, since I get an extra card out of the deal. And we get to make a token that's tapped and attacking. And then Brutal Cathar. Nice answer to the Regent. So if they take it, I can just make a Phantom here to chump the Regent so it doesn't get out of hand. But with Cathar, we know we can answer it. And then next turn, Adversary with uh, four extra mana should be able to close out the game. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. We'll need a third land. But for now, Trapper into either Aspirant or Join the Dance. Hoping to draw Katilda, which would be one of our best draws here. Let's just play Aspirant. And then... I think I still pump Aspirant itself as opposed to Trapper. So I can keep my zero-powered creature for Coven purposes. Opponent foretells out of black whites. Not sure what that could be. Let's find out. Our opponent's an Angel's deck, so could easily be another Starnheim unleashed. Could be, I guess, a Doomscar, but more likely Starnheim. So could exile this. Could go for Legion Angel, which is kind of problematic if they start chaining those together. Exiling Starnheim Unleashed means they won't be able to foretell it. So it's just going to be 6 mana to make an Angel. But if they can chain together Legion Angel, then the Starnheim Unleashed doesn't really matter. So let's go for Legion Angel here. And then now, given that we know about Vanishing Verse, could see an argument for diversifying here. Also, Trapper could also be used to tap down large angels. Alrighty, so... Could play Adeline. I think I'm okay waiting on Brutal Cathar to exile a token. And then... I'm kind of okay trading Spellbinder for Youthful Valkyrie. So maybe... Put Counter on Trapper once again. Attack with the team, get a 1-1. One -one. Sure. Vanishing Verse likely to exile Adeline. Another card foretold, that's the second Sternheim. And there's a Vanishing Verse. Okay, we're getting close to lethal here. We've got 
8 damage if I play Brutal Cathar. Or I can play another Aspirant and join the dance, keep this for Angel Tokens. Get two triggers. And now... Could still offer the trade for Valkyrie. Essentially deal six. Puts them to four. Even if they make two angels next turn, we should still kill them, so... Yeah, that's fine. So I'm hoping there's no Doomscar in our future, but it doesn't seem like it. Yep, just turn him for two. I exile one of them. And attack with the team. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hand. Turn to Aspirant into either... Adeline or Augur. We've got perfect mana. Facing off against the turn 2 pack leader. Alright. I think I still go for white, although I don't think it really matters here with two more dual lands. Opponent not playing snow lands, so we don't have to worry about Blizzard Brawl. It's gonna be a Lotus Cobra. Two mana left, and an attack for three. So I do have a profitable attack with Adline here, as I can make a 3-3 Aspirant and they won't want to block the 1-1 one, one token with Cobra, so that seems good. Whenever we get a chance to make a free token and have it survive, it's usually the right play. And then next turn we can have a look with Spellbinder. Reason to play Spellbinder is to maybe prevent a Ren and 7 on 4, which they do. Alright, at least the token is only a 4 for at the moment. Well, actually going for the 0 ability, making more mana with Lotus Cobra. Keeping Ren at a healthy loyalty. Okay. So... I guess there's no harm in playing Spellbinder first. Skewed Swarm, I see. That explains the opponent's play here. So, where to put the counter? Can put it on the Aspirant itself, send everyone at Ren. Sure. Including the token. And then our opponent will be able to play Skewed Swarm, and given that they saved Ren, they will be able to play a land as well. So then it's our job to try and race in the air with a Spellbinder. Seek us Chariots. Luckily, won't be able to copy the Tree Folk token right away. So our opponent sacrifices Ren to make a 6 6, which does block our Spellbinder at the moment. But Adeline can still attack into the Tree Folk. And at least now Skewed Swarm is less of a concern. So I think we start with Augur, see what's on top. Sigarda's not bad. So let's see here. So let's say I pump up Adeline. Then they won't be able to double block with the cap tokens at least to trade. Uh, so they're probably just gonna take it or jump with a cat. And then next turn, if they attack with chariot, I can still trade off pretty easily. Although I guess having a 5 5 aspirant would be nice. But yeah, I don't want my opponent trading the two cats for Adeline, so this seems fine. And then I think it's just Adeline attacking. They get to eat my 1-1 token for free, but sending 
additional tokens will just result in them getting eaten alive as well. Opponent took eight. All right, so we'll see how the game develops. Skewed Swarm into a land makes a copy. And they could copy the Skewed Swarm token as well with Chariot, but they're probably going for the Tree Folk. So they'll have two large Tree Folk tokens, and then they can start going wide with the Skewed Swarm, which is a pretty good combination, all things told. Now I just get to block Chariot for free. All right, but we do have more card advantage going in our favor here. Ooh, Katilda's an excellent pickup. Now I've got plenty of mana to work with. Ooh, and this Intrepid Adversary is going to be incredibly backbreaking once we get to play it. So I'm going to wait until next turn. And then, yeah, opponent sees a writing on the wall. They didn't know about the Adversary that was incoming, but next turn... Let's do the math here. How much mana do we have? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 mana. So I could pay the kicker essentially 6 times, which, uh, yeah, giving the team plus 6 plus 6 is probably enough to win. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand could be fine if we find green mana and get to curve Trapper into join the dance and add line. As is... I guess I'm still gonna keep it. At the very least, I can use Trapper's ability on two. And then have a uh, turn three Spellbinder or Adeline. Alright, Duress can take Join the Dance. And I'll play the Adversary. And we'll see if we can make a token with Adeline next turn. Put on blue-black. Can still attack with a trapper just to make a token, even if they can deal with the adversary. Alright, and that's what happens. Catilda will be nice too once we find green mana. And next turn, Spellbinder to check for Sweepers. Opponent taking three of their land. For a Sedgemore Witch. There's my green mana. So, get to play Katilda into Elite Spellbinder. And there's Sedgemore Witch and a Divide by Zero. That's probably the most impactful cards. Let's take the uh, Sedgemore Witch, I believe. Although if I take the Divide by Zero, to be honest, the Sedgemore Witch doesn't do much without any instants and sorceries to enable it. So maybe I'll go for the Divide by Zero anyway. And then might as well attack with a 1-1, since we get a replacement 1-1, and they're gonna block one of them. So, just gets me one extra damage. And then next turn, could flashback join the dance, could maybe start activating Katilda. Have a lot of options. Bonus at 9, so they're pretty close to dead. Let's say we join the dance, and uh, then I can use a trapper to tap one of the witches, and smash. Bones forced to chump. Or they can take lethal. All right. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine hands. We'll need a second green source eventually, but uh, 
double aspirant and join the dance in the meantime. Will be great if we find Catilda, which is something I find myself saying a lot. Just goes to show how good that card is in the deck. Opponent's black green. There's an argument for joining the dance. If her opponent has spot removal, that way Adeline gets to make an extra token right away. But this worked out. Next turn I can join and play Aspirant. Binding going for the Aspirant. I'm fine with that. So let's tap properly here. And then next turn Adversary can also give the team plus one plus one. I'll diversify a little bit. Maybe should have been thinking about a Meat Hook Massacre for three. Although Adeline can still survive it. Alright, it's gonna be a Spider Queen instead. So her opponent's got two blockers, so adversary should be enough to win the game here. I'll face. And that can go face as well. Yeah, it goes to show how powerful Adeline can be if you can get a few tokens for free, especially when backed up by an Anthem effect like the Intrepid Adversary. So not a card you can really mess around with. And her opponent packs it in. Yeah, they had a completely reasonable start. Turn 2 Florahedron, turn 3 Binding, turn 4 Spider Queen, but they just got overrun here. So yeah, we got to see our green-white humans deck in action. And the deck can do some very powerful things. Cards that stood out most by far are Catilda, even more so than Sigarda, just being able to make so much mana in combination with something like an Augur of Autumn, letting you play lands and creatures over the top, is just a great pairing. And then of course the Intrepid Adversary coming down once we do have a Catilda in play is usually game over on the spot. And then actually got to use the Trapper at one mana a fair bit with the activated ability, so I'm pretty happy with the inclusion even as just a two of. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.